Prolin PLN. Hello, my name is Brandon Carter. Thanks for taking a look at our Snack Bite series. In this Snack Bite, we're going to take a look at new tools that automotive OEMs should consider taking a look at when updating an NX12. So I broke this down in three areas. It's just a quick little bit of information. I look at advanced freeform enhancements, digital mock-up environment, and animation designer. Just a few notable items here underneath the advanced freeform enhancements. Um, it's a couple things about the section surface specifically, the new pad type and variable offset face, and some enhancements to flattening and forming. For the section surface, that particular command uses a new lofting engine. It's only going to use the required number of poles per side to get their proper continuity, so it has a performance increase. Also, circular two-point radius can now get users to get alternate solutions. The variable offset pad, or I'm sorry, variable offset face, the pad type, um, variable offset face was introduced in NX11 and what we consider the panel type you see there at the top. The pad type is new in NX12. We'll take a look at that in a minute. As far as flattening and forming, this was also another tool that was introduced in NX11. It has improved control. There's now more options for section surface creating and you can flatten more complex shapes without distortion. All right, as far as the uh, variable offset face, um, if I come up here and look at our surfacing tools, like I said, variable offset face was introduced in NX11. Um, it was introduced as just the panel type. So if I come in here and grab this surface, notice there's this option here for region boundaries. If I go ahead and grab each one of those datum planes, it's going to split the surface into different regions. You see the different handles for each region. You also see them listed here in a list so I can select them graphically or here in the list. For region 1 it could have a specific offset, region 2 could have a specific offset, and region 3 could have a specific offset. You see that there's offset itself where it's kind of a straight hard edge it creates or you can create a bridge which builds the continuity in between there. You're probably familiar with bridge curve and some of those tools. And pull this over the other side so you see the bridge a little better. Those options right there are what was new in NX11. If I go ahead and hit undo and put this back to our original surface, I'm going to use a different definition for the regions. I'll go ahead and hide these planes and here we'll look at a projected curve. So this is just a, a sketch that I projected down onto that surface if we run the variable offset face again, you'll notice that the pad option is, is what's new. So I can grab my same surface. Now for my input curves, I'm going to grab those projected curves. And I can start to offset there as well. Now down here you have region 1, which is the outside. Region 2, which is my internal loop. For region 1, I'm going to go ahead and make sure this is set to offset. And you notice that now we have um, the pad type. So very quickly, just within variable offset face, I can get that result. As far as flattening and forming, this is another tool that was introduced in NX11. So by default, if I come in here and I grab all the body faces, in this case this is a, a surface body, a, a sheet body as we call it in NX. If I come in here and say, where do I want to hold the surface? What directions do I want to flatten? Here I selected the U direction instead of the V direction, but it, it didn't figured out the V direction because it's perpendicular. And just with a, a couple of clicks, I can get the flattened state of that. Now what's new in NX12, if I go ahead and hit undo on this twice, if I run the flattening and forming command again, I'll say once again where do I want to hold the surface, how do I want to flatten it, Down here you'll see there's different options for how it's constrained or basically how you're going to hold it. In this case maybe I want to say how can I minimize distortion by creating ripped edges. 
So if I come in here and do something like this and kind of chase these edges, see how it allows the surface to rip as it flattens, right? Giving me a different you know, a blank shape or a, a flat pattern shape, if you will. I'm just going to chase this around. Once again, notice the, re the results here. I kind of started on the outside and worked my way in. If I come out here on the other side and work, you know, kind of towards the inside and work my way out, notice I get a different um, distortion pattern or, or shape whenever this is flattened. So like I said, flattening and forming was a tool new in NX11, and it was greatly enhanced here in NX12. So there's my resulting flat shape. Next thing I want to point out is a digital mock-up environment. There's some tools in here to create snapshots. We call this the DMU application. It's basically an environment where we can set up reviewing different assembly configurations, up an area where we can explore but not actually touch or manipulate the product assembly. We can create different snapshots, move parts around, um, take those snapshots. It's nice for design reviews because we can quickly get back and forth between those snapshots and like I said it doesn't manipulate or, or affect the product assembly or real assembly for a lack of a better term. <clears throat> Alright so if I look here at this particular assembly and data set um, here you see I have my, my automobile, my car. Um, if I want to drill down here and focus on another area, we'll go ahead and open up this particular seat subassembly and focus on that. So go ahead and pretend that we're just working on this uh, subassembly, which we are, and if I come up here and do File New, you'll notice some new templates underneath DMU, the DMU tab. So I'm just going to grab this Design Review template, and this is creating, you know, kind of that we, we consider this kind of the master model approach where we have this new file and it's referencing um, the seat subassembly in this case. And we also get this snapshot navigator. So what this allows me to do is just come in here to maybe, you know, something like a top view and I can create a snapshot. Notice it creates a snapshot here. I could rename it. I'm just going to call this top view. If I come up here and orient view to uh, a front view how this is oriented I can go ahead and create another snapshot I'll rename that and call that the front view so what this is doing so far it looks a lot like model views I can double click these and quickly get between those particular snapshots I can reset it to design state so there it has that orientation you know, maybe I'll come in here and actually I'll go back to a uh, top view. And I can move this in a particular work set. So this is like move component, but it's only affecting in this snapshot, this DMU environment. So if I click move in work set, maybe a window select around that back row of seats. And just like a move component, I can say go ahead and move this back, um, you know, 500 millimeters and I'll go ahead and create a snapshot here. So I'll uh, rename this one to top view rear seat edit. So you can see I can give descriptive names for these snapshots and once again this allows me to quickly get back to different um, configurations in these snapshots. There I did the top view, notice how the seats moved um, forward and here in the rear, notice how they move back, and then obviously the, the front again. I can insert a product, which this is just like an add component. So I could go in here and add another component, add another row of seats. Um, obviously, I can do my different measures within this environment. Since I move those back, maybe I'm curious, you know, what the uh, what the distance between those are. So just with my standard measurement tools. And then also inside of this environment, I can do my clip and edit sections if I need to. So the biggest thing is this environment allows us to do, you know, 
these types of actions, these types of configuration discussions, review discussions in this DMU file and not actually affect uh, the assembly or need to have another copy of that assembly just to do this type of work. The last thing we want to take a look at in this presentation is a tool called Animation Designer. The Animation Designer allows us to do kinematic studies, kind of that concept design or analysis. You know, maybe we're designers most of the time, but we need to put on another hat to do a little bit of motion, a little bit of kinematic um, studies or, or uh, analysis. There's 2D free body motion studies that can be done where you just take out a sketch and move sketch geometry around and see how it's going to interact or if it's going to collide or if you can do assemblies which have components or they can even be multi-body part files meaning it's just one PRT file that has different solids in it. They're you know time-based motion it's independent of structure as I previously mentioned if you already have assembly constraints set up in the NX assembly they can be mapped over to animation designer joints you don't have to build the joints manually or if there are not any assembly constraints you can build those manually um, there's relationships for gears, chain belts, rack and pinion, or I'm sorry, rack and pinions and cams. You can do collision solving on multiple parts, and then you get graphs of motion parameters so you can really see the, the time-based motion um, parameters. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at this. Alright, so inside of Animation Designer, you can you can turn this on. I have an Animation Designer tab. Over here I have an Animation um, Navigator tab in the Navigator window. I have multiple solutions. You can see I can create multiple solutions with new solution. In this case, this particular assembly already has assembly constraints built up. If I were to go in and do a move part just in normal NX assemblies, I'd be able to rotate this crankshaft and see the piston move up and down. Because I already have the assembly constraints, I'm going to do the command joints from assembly constraints. It's going to analyze those assembly constraints and say, well, because that's a rotational type assembly constraint, you need to have a revolute joint in the um, animation designer tool. Okay? So what it's going to do is go ahead and say, I've created those. And then based on those also, it's created rigid groups, what moves, what the different joints are. You see them listed here. Now to get this to actually move, what we need to do is come up and either say how is this motor going to move by position or how is this motor going to move based on speed. I'm going to do a speed motor. I'm going to grab this revolute joint which is on the crankshaft and say how many degrees per second or RPM or you know depending on what my units are, how fast I want that to move. So I've applied a motor to that particular joint. If I hit play, notice the movement. If I need to flip the direction I can just go ahead and reverse that to a negative, hit play and notice the movement. So this bearing over here, this blue component is fixed, the cylinder itself is fixed, there's a cylindrical joint between the um, piston and the cylinder and then you see basically everything else is a revolute joint. Now if I didn't have assembly constraints what this would look like I'm going to go ahead and just create a new solution. Let's forget that we had solution one even. And we're not going to map from assembly constraints. This is what it would look like adding our own joints. So if I come in here to the joint command, I'm just going to start off with my fixed joints first. I don't have to. I just like to do that by saying, hey, this is going to move. This isn't going to move. So I know that's going to be fixed. I know the um, cylinder component's going to be fixed then I'll start working on my revolute joints. Well between the crankshaft and the bearing that's going to rotate or be a revolute joint. What axis is it going to rotate in? And then where do I want to see the joint? I just like to dock it on different center points. I can set up a revolute joint between the crankshaft and the connecting rod. Use quick pick to grab that. What axis is that going to rotate about and where do I want to see the joint? I know the connecting rod and the piston pin is going to rotate. Once again, where do I want to see that joint? I need to control the pin and the um, 
piston itself. So I'll go ahead and do another revolute joint and say where do I want to locate that. And then finally maybe I'll do a cylindrical joint between the piston itself and the cylinder. And I need that to be vertical and then once again where I want that to be. And just like I did before I'm going to go ahead and do a speed motor on my revolute joint. Then notice I can play through it. So there I was basically just positioning and, and given the degrees of freedom as far as a revolute joint, a cylindrical joint, or if something was fixed for how those parts would go together. You'll see as this plays up in the toolbar there's different things for visualization. I can do a display color so it'll show me exactly what I picked and color coded over here. There's collision detection and like I said we can look at the time frame and the motion parameters um, from this. So I just wanted to go through a few things to look out for um, inside of NX12. If you need more information on what's new in NX12, we've completed a NX CAD Lunch Bites What's New in NX12 video. You can check that out on our website and our YouTube channel. Thanks for uh, your attention and have a great day. ProLin PLM.